Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech, and I want to go over 10 features you may not know exist in iOS 12. So the first one is something that can be really handy. It works with your AirPods or a paired Bluetooth headset. It's called Live Listen, and you need to have your AirPods or headset paired. And then what you need to do is go to settings, and then we'll go down to control center, customize controls, and then down here, hit the plus on hearing if you don't have that already. So now we've got that little ear icon. Now we go to the control center and I already have an AirPod in my ear and paired. And if we 3d touch or 3d press on this, you'll see it says live listen off. Now what we can do is tap on this. It will turn on and then use the microphone from the iPhone to actually give me the sound from the microphone here and put it in my ears with whatever Bluetooth headset I'm using. So if I tap on this now, I can hear myself speak through the microphone on the phone. Let me turn it back off. It's a little distracting, but so you could set this at the front of a classroom. For example, if you're having a hard time hearing, set it on the teacher's desk and use your AirPods to listen in or whatever other thing you're doing, maybe a conference, maybe at college. Um, maybe you just want to hear a conversation a little bit louder. You can do that in a noisy place. So it's pretty nice. The next thing is pretty simple and straightforward. Apple added the ability to search for music using the lyrics. So if we go into here and then we'll go to search, we'll just type let's see. You know how I feel. There's the lyric I want. It's going to find oh, feeling good. That's what I was looking for. So you can search songs by lyric. If you can't think of the name of it, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Now there's a nice feature called do not disturb. That's been there for a while, but there's a new bedtime feature that will actually show you the weather in the morning. And a lot of people saw this and said, how do I get that weather on my screen to show up? Now, if you have do not disturb turned on like I do, and you just turn it off, turn it back on, you're not going to see the weather until it's the morning. So it won't show up until it's morning, and then it gives you the weather forecast and air quality. But in order to get that to show up, you have to have something turned on. So you're gonna to go to settings, then you're gonna to go to privacy, location services, and then scroll down to weather. Weather has to be turned on to always, or this will not work. So if you want to have that little weather forecast in the morning, you need to have weather turned on to always, or that's not going to work at all. And you'll have to, I guess, deal without having that on your display. It will maybe use a little bit more battery, but since it's usually plugged in overnight on a nightstand or something like that, it uses very minimal battery. And since Apple owns that app, it also uses very little. So it only is going to check the location in the morning when it needs it. Now, the next one is pretty simple and straightforward, but very handy. Maybe you need to share a password with someone. You can now do that over AirDrop. So if you go into your settings, we'll go back here, and then you go to your passwords and accounts. Now in passwords and accounts, I've got a bunch of passwords here. We'll go here and maybe I want to share a password from this website. It doesn't exist anymore. What I need to do is tap and hold on the password. And now I get the option to airdrop and I can airdrop that to anyone nearby and it will share it with people instantly. Now, one thing you may or may not know is that Apple on all of its devices has always had a dictionary. You can easily figure out what a word means by tapping and holding on it. And I'll show you that in a moment. But one thing they've added is a thesaurus. So in order to turn that on, we're going to go to settings, go to general, go down to dictionary. And then under dictionary, we have American English, Oxford American writers thesaurus. So make sure that's on, go here, then maybe go to a website. And we'll just pick a word here. Maybe we want to get the meaning of this and also use a thesaurus to find similar words. So there we go. We'll hit look up. And now we have the dictionary meaning and then also the thesaurus. If we want this here, we can tap on it. And then we have all of these different words. We go back, we've got the definition, very simple. It's very nice and built in and it really helps maybe if you're in school and trying to figure out some words to use uh, that are similar, but not the same. Now, the next thing's really handy. If you've lost your phone and you have multiple Apple devices, maybe you have an iPad or a watch Siri can now find your phone. So let me show you how that works. Find my phone. No. Okay. You 
can check the location of all of your devices in the Find My iPhone app. So of course you could have just checked it in the app, but you can now do it with Siri as well to get her to find your phone more easily. Now, another feature that's great with iOS 12 is notifications. It groups them, makes it much easier to work with. And one thing people may not know though, is it groups them by context rather than by app. So if it sees maybe Gmail notifications and the context is not the same, it may not group them together properly. So we can change that to group it just by app and make it easier to manage. We can do that in settings then notifications. Then we pick the app we want, and this can be a pain because there's a lot of apps. So maybe we want to group, say podcasts, let's go into podcasts. And now we can see it says notification grouping automatic. We want to do it by app or we can turn it off. But if you do it by app on the notifications where you're getting lots of them and they're not grouping, try doing that and it should fix it. Now, the next thing is you can share a link in photos that will expire. So if I go into photos, Let's go to photos, maybe a recent wallpaper here. And in this wallpaper, maybe I want to share this, but I want it to expire or be able to unshare it later on. So let's go here. And now we can just copy link to iCloud and copying that link to iCloud will allow us to share it. Now I could share it with you or I can share it with someone in messages. And once I share it, you'll see I can disable it. So if I go here, maybe paste that here. You'll see it's a share, share.icloud.com. And now one photo is shared. Now, if I want to stop sharing it right here, I can do that very easily. Just tap on it and then tap the three menu buttons in the upper right and then stop sharing. And then he won't be able to open this anymore. You can also do it from the photos app directly in the sharing for you tab. So this is under for you anyway. And then just go here, stop sharing, and he can no longer open it. Now, the next thing has to do with older devices. And here I have a 5S. And on older devices such as this, you can now use a trackpad by holding space. So you can make the cursor move around like you have a trackpad anywhere here. Just hold the space bar and then move your finger and you've got a full trackpad. This works anywhere and is really simple and straightforward to use. There's other places you can do 3D touch actions that you couldn't do before, but that's the major one here and you can use that throughout the OS and it's really handy on older devices. Now the final thing has to do with face ID enabled phones and it has to do with Memoji. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'll go into messages and under messages, you'll see we have the Animoji here or Memoji. We can pick, there's my Memoji. So you can see this and maybe I want to react to something. So I'll just react. Tap and hold the face I just made, drag it up onto whatever photo you have, and there you go. So you can put your reaction of your Memoji onto a photo or within uh, messages itself. So it's pretty simple and straightforward, but it's a nice little addition that's there. So that's it. Those are the 10 features you may not have known. Let me know if you knew any of them or if you didn't know any of them. Now, many of you have asked me, how do I become a creator on YouTube and how do I edit videos? And Skillshare is one of those places you can learn how to do that. They've partnered with me on this video. And as you can see here, they have a ton of online learning classes here. We've got everything from animation to freelance, to management, to web development. And maybe you want to learn to create videos like I do, what you'll do is go here to film production and you can search through all of their different videos. And maybe you want to look for Final Cut Pro. That's what I use to edit. You'll see they have a bunch of different classes on Final Cut Pro, and these are from people that work in the field. So that's not just anybody teaching you. They're people that do this regularly for a living and they teach you their skills step by step. So if we take a look here, learning Final Cut Pro in 25 minutes, you can watch this video and it's a class introduction and then a simple first step. There's a lot of other videos like this and Skillshare is more affordable than most learning platforms out there with an annual subscription of less than $10 a month. Now for the first 500 of you that click the link in the description, you can get two free months of Skillshare premium. So you can check this out for yourself. I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. If you have a great tip to share with everyone, please place it in the comments as well. I'll link the wallpaper in the description as I always do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>